Okay, so um, as most of these students are here and uh, they have seen lecture one, so what I'll do is that uh, I'll try to review the lecture number two, right? So let's start with lecture number two, I'm going back. Okay. Okay. Lecture number two. Okay. The fourth concept is actually the exchange and the relationship. I told you in the lecture number two that the exchange is actually an act of obtaining desired object, which is which can be both tangible and intangible from the from someone else by offering something in return. You you are going to provide something to some party. You provide something that the other party wants, and you try to collect something from the other party that you want. So it's actually it's an exchange of value that takes place. So exchange is obtaining the desired object from someone else and giving them something which they desire. So that is what the exchange is all about. So it means what do you want that I want and what do I want that you want. So this is something which is called an exchange. The result is actually we call it a deal when we when we agree to exchange thing we call it deal okay so and uh, marketing consists of action taken to create maintaining and grow the desire exchange relationship with the target market target audience that involves in involve an offer okay uh, when we talk about marketing process marketing process consists of five steps one is to uh, one is to understand the marketplace and the wants and needs of the customer if there is a demand for it you first go out and you try to understand the market situation and the and the and the and the customers who would uh, who will be willing to uh, uh, who would be willing to purchase your product but before you try to create the product you first go out in the market and you try to understand the the customers the uh, the consumers and what are their problem what are their issue what they want what they need what is the market gap that needs to be fulfilled so and that can be done through uh, research that can be done through uh, uh, surveys that can be done through uh, analyzing the uh, the customer collected data that can be done through uh, interviewing the potential customers and there are so many ways to do that right so first first of all in marketing what you try to do you go out in the market and you try to understand what the people want what the people want and need what are their problems and uh, what are the things that they want and and uh, whether there there's a demand for it which means are they ready to pay for it uh, pay for the uh, solving those problem are they ready to pay for whatever that you want uh, are they ready to pay for whatever that they need if they are unable to pay or if they do not want to pay then then there is no demand for it right you may understand the marketplace you may understand the want and need of the customer but if the customer is not willing to pay then there is no demand next what you try to do you try to design intelligent marketing strategies how can those demand how can those needs and wants can be fulfilled through various means uh, i've told you before in the in the previous lecture one slide that uh, Every problem has multiple solution, and every solution is actually a market opportunity. And every opportunity is uh, is basically a chance for you to earn profit. So, what you try to do, you try to create strategy. You try to create marketing plan in in a, such an intelligent manner that you would be able to fulfill the want and needs of your customer. Okay. Once you do that, you try to understand what's the plan, what you need to do, what you need to create in order to fulfill the wants and need of the customer. Then you try to create that offer. Then you try to create those those products that have value that that will satisfy the want and needs of the of your consumer. And through that, you try to do a feasibility study whether it would be feasible for us to create that offer or not, create that product or not, create that service or not. Whether we have the enough resources to create those services or not and uh, what are the information and idea and experience that we require for us to build that offer or build that product that would satisfy the want and need of the of those customer so what you try to do is that first you identify the marketplace then you intelligently design these strategies marketing planning okay, how can those want and need can be satisfied and then you create that product and services and that solution 
and find out whether you are able to do it or not, whether you have a, a plan for it, whether you have the resources for to do it or not, and then engage the customer and build profitable relationships. And then you provide those values, then you uh, deliver those values to your customer so that their wants and need can be fulfilled. And in the process, you engage your customer, you try to communicate with them, you try to uh, sell them those solutions, sell them those products, and in terms, you try to build the relationship with them and make them and try to make them happy and try to hook through the marketing activities. You try to hook your customer so that your customer would not leave you and would go to another competitor. Then what you do, you capture in return, uh, you capture value in return by giving them the product and the services and uh, building a relationship. What you want from them is the money, is the profit, is, the, uh, is what they have that you want, which is actually the money or the profit or the build equity. So this is something which is the last step in marketing process. Understand the marketplace wants and need design intelligent marketing strategy, create marketing offer or product. Then sell that offer to uh, your customer through engagement, through and building pro uh, in, in the process, uh, building profitable relationship and in return capture the value from the customers and build and uh, make profit and build uh, customer equity. Okay, now this is something uh, which are uh, basically the abbreviation through which you can get to remember all these steps. Y UN stands for understanding the market needs and want. DI stands for design intelligent marketing strategy. COV stands for create marketing offer that has value. And ER stands for engage and uh, engage customer and build a relationship, ER. CV stands for capture value. MP stands for market profit. B, uh, BE stands for build customer equity. So if you get to remember these abbreviation or these uh, uh, acronym, you would be able to recreate all those those uh, process. Okay, now this is the same thing in, in the in the graphical manner or in the uh, more uh, in a in a box uh, diagram. So this is something which we call create value, engage and build and relationship, and then capture value in return. Okay, customer relationship value. Uh, relationship management and the customer lifetime value. Now, by definition, <coughs> customer relationship management is actually the comprehensive approach for creating, maintaining, and expanding customer relationship. When we say a comprehensive, it means touching each and every aspect of your business area, which is actually in term is supply chain. Now, creating value or creating a relationship means you need to create relationship with your supplier as well. You need to create relationship with your with your employees, you need to create relationship with your distributors, you need to create relationship with your customer. Because in every sense, everyone is your customer. You cannot provide them the value and the services unless you create a relationship with them and you and, and you give them what they want and you get from them what you want. So it's an approach, it's a way of dealing and uh, dealing with something. Right, it's what we call uh, dealing with the customer, dealing with the, the supplier, dealing with the employees, and all that. So there are two kinds of customers. One is called the internal customer, and other is called the external customer. When we talk about the internal customer, internal customers are actually your employees who are working for your company, and the external com uh, when we talk about the external customers, they are actually your customer. They can be your customer. They can be your supplier. They can be your distributor. They can be government regulatory authorities or any other uh, stakeholders that you get to interact with. Right? Any question? Any query so far? Okay. So the main aspect is the strategy is to create, maintain, and expand customer relationship, which we call the customer life cycle. Once you type, uh, you can get to create the relationship. You need to establish the relationship with your customer, and then you try to maintain that relationship so that the customer would keep coming back to your your shop. And then you expand and make your relationship with your customer stronger, so that uh, they become loyal customer or permanent customer so that they won't leave you for a for another competitor so this is something this is what we call the strategy a strategy or plan to create the relationship how would you do that how would you try to attract new customer strategies or plan to maintain those relationship how can you get your customers to get hooked 
can get them to buy over and over again and how can you expand the relationship how can you make them permanent customer what are the things that uh, you would do in order to make those customer your raving fans so that they they would never let you uh, let you uh, go for another competitor's product so what are the planning so so planning can be from from creating the customers to maintaining the customer to expanding the customer relationship so strategy is actually required the planning is actually required for creating maintaining and expanding the customer relationship which we call the customer customer cycle so customer lifetime value as uh, as the name suggests that customer lifetime value is the is how much a customer is worth to the business throughout the business relationship which means if a customer uh, has come and has started buying your product and the services so and uh, for example if you sell your customer the first product that they are getting and it's worth the hundred dollars so and you are getting let's say uh, thirty dollars as a profit so that customer is giving you the profit of thirty dollars for just one transaction but if the customer is keep on coming over and over again every month then it means the customer is giving you thirty dollar every month for now over the period of time the customer would give you three hundred and sixty dollars on annual basis right as a profit now here so the customer worth is actually thirty dollars per year but for how long this customer is going to attach itself with your business and how for how long and for how many years the customer would keep coming back and would give you thirty dollars for every year so that that's something that needs to be calculated and overall the worth and the value of the customer can be calculated which is called the customer lifetime value which means throughout when you get to calculate your current worth of a customer how much the customer is giving you profit for on annual basis and how much that profit is going to be generated from that customer for years to come let's say if the if the uh, if the um, if the customer uh, is giving you 360 dollar worth of profit and uh, if let's say if the um the customer sticks to you for next 5 years it means 360 dollars per year multiply by 5 that would give you this that's what we call the retention time how uh, how for how many times or for how many years the customer would be sticked to your to your product and the services and would give you the profit and uh, how much number of product does he get to purchase let's say if he get to purchase um 100 dollar worth of uh, Um, a gym service right and uh, uh, or rather let's say if he gets to buy 100 dollars a month uh, worth of chocolates so if he uh, if he re- repeatedly buys those chocolates and uh, the uh, what is the average sale how many chocolates he is going to buy it and uh, how many uh, times he is going to repeat it in a month and uh, how much the customer would be would be willing to stick with your uh, offer and with your product for how many uh, for how many years and from those sales what is your profit margin so if you get to calculate all these um, this is the average sale if a person gets to buy uh, $5.90 worth of uh, sale and he does it four times in a month and he does it uh, four times in a year and he does it for next 20 years and the profit margin for that sale is 21.919 dollars uh, so that customer lifetime value for the next uh, 20 years if you get to calculate how many uh, profit the customer is generating uh, is expected to generate for the next 20 years it is 5200 dollars so this 5200 dollar is what the customer lifetime value the the entire lifetime when the customer would be buying from you over the period of for the next 20 years this is how much profit you are going to generate from that customer alone so this is what we call customer lifetime value 
so this is there's basically an example uh, written in the uh, detail here you might want to get uh, you might want to pause it and you can you can get to look at it if you don't understand anything you just let me know so that i can get to explain things in a more detailed manner g anything any question any query so far okay rida shakil the, the the internal customers are your employees when we talk about internal we are actually talking about the internal employees that uh, the internal people or internal internal uh, entities that work inside the boundaries of the company so so these are basically the internal customers are your internal employees who are actually contributing towards uh, creation and development of the product and the services so these are basically called your internal customer and the external customer are the uh, the customers or the thing that you get to interact with and uh, and uh, they contribute something to the to the profit margin so that is actually what we call the external customer which includes the customer as well and the suppliers and the distributor and the retailers and and uh, all everything regard regarding that so even the government organization are your external customers because even if they have some sort of influence which would if uh, which would uh, which would help you to generate profit so that way through government organization and the policies and the through government regulatory authority you you may get to generate various profits so the, so no in so in a way government is actually one of the customer that you need to deal with and you need to establish your relationship with the government organization as well okay okay how can you calculate profit margin um, it's written here in this slide which says here formula for cal calculating profit margin profit margin is equals to average sale minus average cost of sale divided by average sale multiplied by 100 so if you apply this formula you can get to you can get to find out what is profit margin okay any question any query so far okay let's proceed onward <clears throat> okay why to calculate the customer lifetime value to gain competitive advantage in the market competitive advantage is something in a way that how can you make yourself more compelling or more prominent in the market as compared to your competitors how can you make how can you can make yourself king of the market or how can you compete or how can you overrun or uh, or overtake your competitors in the market so this is what we call competitive advantage now it could be your best product that can help you to create competitive advantage and help you to become the king of the market or it can be your processes or it can be your strategy or planning which can help you to achieve your competitive advantage in the market so uh, this clv also guides you to make intelligent decision making as such which customer do you pay more attention to and which customer uh you you should not be paying more attention to how much the investment you should put in into which customer and uh, how much investment is to gain uh, for the new customer it can help you to calculate all this so customer lifetime value is this segmentation dividing total market into smaller group and uh, that have similar want and need to identify the target market and uh, we do that by uh, dividing the total market the total population that exists in the market into various categories or various through various filters demographically uh, demographically we filter the total number of people that exist in the market who are willing to willing to purchase into various categories for example in terms of income income group uh, whether it's uh, lower lower class middle class upper class how much income are they uh, generating over the period of one month and so that uh, which income group are we actually targeting which age are we actually targeting are we targeting the the baby or the toddler or the teen or the adult or the old age people which gen gender are we targeting are we gen uh, targeting gender male female or uh, both which family are we actually targeting are we targeting the family that uh, that lives separately or are we targeting families that uh, live in combined family which education level are we actually targeting are we targeting 
people who are well educated university going a school going or uh, or uh, or are we targeting uh, people who are aren't not uh, are not very educated what occupation are we targeting are we targeting the, uh, the, the uh, are we targeting the businessmen are we targeting uh, managers are we targeting uh, industry uh, cement industries uh, manufacturer are we targeting so what kind of occupation or what kind of professional are we actually targeting and which ethnicity are we actually targeting are we targeting the um, uh, the uh, the ruler areas or uh, certain certain people who belong to certain ethnic groups for example um, if you get to target uh, if you if you uh, if you get to design the uh, Sindhi topi, so it would be precisely you are targeting the uh, the the ruler areas of the of the Sindhi uh, society, and you are targeting those people. So ethnicity, you are trying to filter the total population through demographics, and then you try to filter the total population through various geographic locations such as urban and rural, city area, and various other things, right? And then you filter the total market in terms of psychological basis what what sort of lifestyle do they practice are they um, uh, more outgoing or are they more home based or are they more liberal or are they uh, more traditional do they have a strong uh, conservative beliefs or do they have a liberal beliefs uh, do they value the culture or not so based on all these filters you can get to filter the total target market and last but not the least you also get to filter the target market through behavior patterns and the, uh, the 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 product usage for example how much the product is basically being consumed by the by the customer and in what manner how much is he going to consume over the period of time how frequently the customer buys the product and usage loyalty uh, how much is he uh, getting his himself or herself attached to that product for how uh, for how long so after filtering filtering all those people through various uh, categories we then we then get to zero in or focused on certain group of people who will be targeting and trying to understand what are their want and what are their need and whether they are going to pay for it or not so this is something which is called segmentation we try to filter the target market through various categories or various filters so that we can get to arrive and then we can get to uh, see who are we actually targeting and who are willing to pay for our offer what are their product and what are their what are their need and what are their want and how can we fulfill them and get money out of them <clears throat> any question any query board of directors are uh, internal. Well, it depends upon the internal as well as external because when we talk about board of directors, it so happens that uh, in the board of directors, there are other um, people who are CEO or various investors that exist in other companies may, may be part of your company's board of directors as well. But yes, generally speaking, board of directors are internal customers as well. how can you get to calculate the average cost you can just get to pause the slide and you can you can find out how the average, co average cost is calculated if you are unable to find that just google it and you would these are basically the few things and minor things which can be which can be uh, which can be find out if you just google it okay what is the main difference between the targeting and positioning because both are uh, the same in various now actually the targeting is actually the focusing on certain certain number of people okay why do we do the segmentation to identify the target market to identify which people are we are we are willing to serve which uh, people's problem are we willing to solve we cannot solve everyone's problem so we are only targeting certain number of people so that we can get to find out what who are they and how they uh, what are their problems and how can we uh, resolve their problem how can we uh, provide them what they want and get them uh, to buy our product and how can we extract money out of these people so these are basically the target market or target people but positioning is something different to identify the target market we do 
companies tend to put companies focus on the certain categories or number of people company cannot focus on everyone so that it needs to, to focus on certain number of people so that they can tend to uh, pay more attention to these people and focus their energy their efforts and their resources to so that they can get to target these people to create competitive advantage in the market yes we do segmentation so that we can create competitive advantage in the market we want to create a better position of our company in the in the in the market and by focusing on certain number of people we may be able to achieve that competitive advantage and last but not the least to <clears throat> manage our company resources in an efficient and effective manner yes you can do that uh, this was basically the example that uh, I've uh, given in the in the lecture. What you can do is that you can go back to my lecture number two, and you can get to you can get to see those example what I've uh, discussed in that. Okay, in the target market. This is what the target market looks like. You when you try to filter everyone that exists in the market who are there to buy things, and you filter it through various segmentation of uh, demographic, psychographics, uh, behavior, and various. Uh, filters you can get to arrive who you are actually targeting or who have similar want and need who you are focusing to deliver values and who you are focusing to deliver your product and services so it's target market is actually the process of evaluating each segment attractiveness and selecting one or more segment to enter which means after each filter we tend to get to highlight and we tend to get to evaluate whether are uh, these filter enough for us so that we can get to uh, we can get to serve the people or do we need to apply more filters so that we can fine tune our uh, target market so that we can get to provide them with the product and the services so target market is actually who is going to buy your product and service okay in 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 terms to evaluate who are best fitted for our product and services we need to highlight all these we need to evaluate whether how many number of people exist in the market that are, that are willing to buy our product and service how much profit are they uh, we can get to generate from those people uh, if the number of people are large and they are willing to pay less for it we may not get more profit but if their number of people are small and yet they are willing to pay more for it we may get more profit it depends upon the situation it depends upon various things demand for the profit are they willing to pay for it or not uh, uh, currently in the future uh, if we uh, the, the number of people that we have filtered out are they willing to pay for uh, for our product and services for the next 5 years or not and uh, competitive situation what is the competitive situation are the people that we have filtered uh, are they basically being targeted by other companies for for the product and the services or we are we as a firm are the only one who are targeting those people and what is the available resources that are available in the uh, in our company are they are we able to uh, do we have enough resources and the capabilities to cater to those number of people and to generate enough uh, product or enough services so that we can get to sell them the product and the services whether it would be feasibility uh, feasible to enter and maintain our position in the market if we get to decide to create burgers are we are we do we have the resources or do we have the energies and the expertise to enter into the fast food market and maintain our position so that for the next 2 years 5 years we will be able to maintain our business position in that market interest of the stakeholders uh, the stakeholders are actually each and everything each and everyone who gets affected by our uh, business decision are basically called these stakeholders so the uh, stakeholders are and uh, and shareholders are actually two different things uh, every shareholder is also a stakeholder but not every stakeholder is also uh, is a shareholder so this is something uh, that you guys need to note down okay so we need to take on board for everyone who are connected with our companies and uh, we can uh, we can get to uh, convince them whether it would be feasible for us to cater to this uh, these number of people who have a willingness to get our product and willingness to pay for it or not if they say uh, no uh, we are not in in your favor and uh, we should look for other target market other people so uh, we may not be able to get that target market and get to sell our product to those target market if the stakeholders doesn't agree then this is something which we should not get in ourselves into so <clears throat> any
any position uh, any question any query position is like mindset of any brand uh, position is about creating perception yes you're right position is about creating perception okay so uh, there are two um, the two market one is called more competitive competitor market which we call the red mark red ocean market and other is uh, no or less competitor market which is called blue ocean market in order to compete in this market you have to you have to use your brain you have to use your resources you have to compete with each and every competitor and you can get a very little share of the market a very little profit from that market from those people but if you tend to explore other areas other market other uh, if you try to create a product which uh, in which there are no other competitors exist in the market then you may be able to get more profit more share and more uh, and you would be more successful in the market so this is called a red ocean market and this is called the red ocean market so it's better to move towards a blue ocean market so that you would generate more profit run uh, rather than to keep yourself uh, in the red ocean market and uh, and get a little profit out of all those competition that already exist in the market okay This is something that I've already discussed in the in the chapter number two. And uh, if you guys haven't, uh, if you guys have haven't uh, watched chapter number two or lecture number two, then I suggest that you go back and you just try to uh, listen to the these uh, lectures so that you can get to understand things better. I'm just uh, rushing all these concepts because. Um, uh, I need to cover more things and uh, that is taking me time so act of designing offer that occupies a unique place in the minds of the consumer it is uh, with respect to its competing uh, competing offer everything every offer that exists in the market that comes from your company or from your competing company or every product that come that you create or your competitors create you are trying to create a clear unique place in your customer's mind you want your customer to remember your product you want your customer to to uh, not only remember your product but tend to associate himself the, the customer with the product so that whenever the name of your of your product or tune or a symbol is emerged the customer would be able to recall your uh, product and uh, and recall in such a way that it would it would be uh, in a good way of remembering your product not in a bad way so this is something which we call positioning which is owning the piece of the customer's mind you need to place your message you need to place your image of the product in the consumer mind in such a way that it would create positive emotions for your customers with respect to your product and the services so giving customers the experience with the product is also called the positioning but what i basically prefer is the core message that the company wants to hammer into the mind of uh, of your of, of its customer related to the offer what are the the nail of messages that you want to hammer inside the mind of your customer so that your customer would not forget your product so this is something which we call positioning so positioning is different than differentiation differentiation can be used in terms of positioning but that is let's not confuse that with with this thing so positioning is something hammering your message into the mindset of your customer so that your customer would remember your product in a good way okay so this is something which we, we call positioning any question any query so far no blue ocean is not dragged from the red ocean blue ocean is is a separate market and and red ocean is a different market it's the the company who gets to decide whether to keep uh, doing business in the red ocean and to deliver the product or the services in into the red ocean market and and uh, do competition in the red ocean or uh, if the company decided to move to a new location or to design a product in a new way or to enter into a new industry this is something which we call blue ocean in which there uh, there will not be exist any competitors or lesser competitor exist okay any question any so query so far so 
okay moving forward so actually differentiation uh, differentiation is actually being creating your offer or creating your product different from the market so that it would create superior value for the for your customer so how can you do that you can do that by creating your offer or creating your product or the services in the eyes of your customer through product price place and promotion these are actually the four elements of marketing we call them marketing mix okay so if you try to create your product in a very high quality manner that would create a good image in the eyes of your cons- customer or consumer if you try to create a, a product or service which has a, a high value in low price model that would also create a good image in the eyes of your customer if you try to promote your uh, product in a good way that it, your customer would remember your product uh, in a good way through your advertisement do na kiya to phir kya jiya the promoting your product in a in a certain way so that uh, the customer would occupy a unique place and then making your product available uh, to the customer uh in a very convenient way so that uh, your uh, your customer would get your product uh get to access your product or and get to buy your product without going to far off places so making your product available to the nearby place is what the placement is all about so you can get to create a good mindset of your product and the services through product price place and promotion we call it positioning with marketing mix so you can not only get you can get to uh, create positioning through four p's but but seven p's as well when whenever the service industry when whenever that you get to deliver your uh, services to the customers you add four uh, three more p's to it you have product price place and promotion but also you can you also have people who are actually your internal employees or your sales person who are dealing with the customer these are basically called your uh, people processes it's the mechanism how the customer would get your product it, does he have to order it online does he have to write a form and you have to submit it in a mail and then you can get to receive the product what is the process of getting the the product so if the process is quick simple and easy the customer would be happy if the process is complicated it takes time and it's very difficult for your customers to understand then it would not create a good impression in the uh, eyes of your customer physical uh, environment or physical evidence is something which which is actually the proof that you are the best and you uh, you follow certain rules and regulation and standard practices that is basically controlled by the government so that if you practice that then it would create a positive uh, impact in the eyes of your customer so just like red bull vitalize body mind and gives you wing is is actually the slogan which is trying to create a positive image in the minds of your customer saying that if you drink our our energy drink it would vitalize your body it would vitalize your mind it would make your mind it would make you more intelligent and would give you wing which means it would give you an out of the box experience it would it would it would give you a very good emotional burst or it would satisfy you or whatever so this is actually a short message that they are trying to create or trying to hammer into the minds of of your customers <clears throat> by creating a slogan so by slogan slogan is actually a form of positioning slogan is not positioning but it's a form of positioning keep this thing in mind whatever slogan is actually driven by whatever the company try to position its position uh, product in the minds of your customer so so vitalize and botting mind mind and give you wing is actually a slogan which imitates or which try to explain what the company wants customers to think about their brand any question any query so far okay so marketing position can be of various types okay we have influence purchaser consumers type then we have substitute whether it's a substitute or not whether it's a com- uh, competitor positioning or not and then we have value positioning in which we have the economic positioning value then we have emotional positioning value then we have a functional positioning value 
so by looking at the advertisement and by looking at the message that they are trying to give to its customer we can get to highlight and we can get to identify which marketing position uh, they're trying to, which kind of position are they trying to use for example function this is the functional positioning which is what we call bright sub right kar dega which means they are highlighting the 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 fast action and the effectiveness of this powders mechanism so that Uh, that can eliminate all the dust and, and all the stain from the from the from the cloth which means they are highlighting it's it's a functional positioning bright sub right kar dega so it is actually a functional positioning and uh, then we have emotional positioning in which uh, some sort of uh, they they try to create an emotional appeal to the to the customer so that uh, out of the emotion they would get your product and services right so this is something which we call emotional positioning competitive positioning is something when you try to compare your product with the with the another product that exists in the market and you try to do a some sort of comparison arm powder ke muqable mein kare dugni dugni safai which means you are clearly comparing your product with a, with another product this is something which is called competitive positioning whenever there is a comparison this is definitely a competitive positioning thing and then economic positioning whenever the the saving of the money and the saving of the of the amount is is highlighted right this is what we call the uh, the economic positioning right and uh, <clears throat> any query any question regarding positioning so far okay marketing mix is actually the best way the marketer presents a goods and services to his customer or, or for his consideration this is something which is called product price and place and promotion Well, now what are the things which are included in the product price and place and promotion when we talk about product highlighting and improving the product we trying to we what we are saying is we are improving the brand name we are in, in, uh, improving the variety and the uh, the kind of products that we are creating we are trying to create a better quality product we are trying to increase more features more functionality to our product we are trying to increase or improve the packaging of the, those product we are trying to increase the size we are trying to increase our services for the uh, of the product that uh, along with our product that we are delivering uh, the warranties and the returns and everything so whenever when we talk about improving the product that includes everything that's highlighted here whenever that we try to say that we are trying to in, uh, we try to make our price competitive we are actually Uh, what we are trying to say is that we we'll, we are lowering the price we are giving them the discount we are giving them various allowances we are trying to create an easy payment mechanism and we try to give them credit terms do not pay us now you can pay us later so whatever that is dealing with the money or dealing with the with the payment things it comes under the price placement is making your product accessible and available to the to the customer at various places so this requires the distrib- improving the distribution channel at uh, how many places the, the 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 product would be available what is the coverage area where 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 and which places your product would be available so that the customer that exists in that area would get to buy your product and services what are the assortment and various things that you uh, that you are highlighting in order to make your product accessible to the to your customer for example uh, creating an app and ordering through that uh, that is basically one sort of assortment inventory whether you are making your product available in a in a huge bulk quantity in, in a store nearby so that the customer w- wouldn't feel that the product has ran out from the market and uh, we are unable to get uh, there is a shortage in the market and make um, uh, bringing the transportation service available or bringing the product delivered to your doorstep or making the uh, product at various location available so that the customer would feel uh, the customer would feel that uh, it would be easy for me to get the product so th- all of these things are exist in the placement or place and when we talk about promotion we are talking about actually sales promotion advertisement sales for direct marketing public relation everything that is that we use in a, whatever channel that we use in order to highlight uh, to communicate our products message to the customer is would come under the promotion uh, aspect whether it's advertisement whether it's billboard whether it's sales force door to door salesman or whether it's dark market public relation everything 
so promotion is actually activities that you try to do in order to make your product message known to your potential and current customers so that is the promotion so so uh, marketing mix is the set of control variables and their level that that the firm set in order to influence the target market it's just like a, a graphical equalizer when you try to increase the level of the product it means you're trying to improve the product you're trying to improve the quality of the product and by going down you're trying to decrease the product you you're trying to decrease the features of the services of the product when you try to increase the price it means the price is getting higher the the customer have to pay more amount of money in order to get that product and services if you try to increase the level of the place which means that by going the uh, by doing the levels up you're trying to increase the availability of the product to every place that the customer exists and if you try to lower it down you are actually making your product less available to the customer and you are confining your product to a single outlet that exists in the marketplace so all every customer has to come to your company outlet in order to get the profit uh, get the pro product whereas if you try to increase the uh, the placement level then it means that the pro the product is available at every uh, customer's nearby location so when you try to increase the promotion it means uh, increasing and uh, and getting to access every channel that you can uh, get to use in order to highlight your uh, message to your customers and when you try to decrease the level of the promotion you are actually limiting yourself to a limited number of channels a limited number of ways that you can get to promote your product and service any question any query so far So this is the market mix. Similarly, that there is a consumer mix, which is customer need, customer solution, customer cost, customer convenience, customer communication. So these are basically actually the four C's of the customer that the customer have in mind. Uh, the customer is thinking whether my need, my want, and my problem is going to be solved or not. Whether the customer is thinking whether uh, uh, whether the the amount of money that I have in my pocket will I be able to get the product in that uh, amount of money or not. will it be conven convenient for me to get the product or not do I, or do i have to walk several miles in order to get the product or not whether the the whatever the, the advertisement is saying uh, is it making some sense or not whether it trigger, triggering my interest or not so these are basically the four c's of the marketing and which is basically the that is the same uh, same as the marketing mix but here the marketing mix was from the marketing mix from the 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 marketers perspective where whether is the consumer mix is from the customers perspective right by easily identifying a, a a product you can get to set the levels according to your uh, according to your mindset for example suzuki mehran has a, for some people it has a medium value but for some people it has a low value the cost for mehran may be high because the last mehran is sold for uh, 900000 rupees so so basically the cost is very high as for 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 from the customer point of view and uh, the convenience may be for a mehran it's it may be convenient because each and every suzuki showroom was selling mehran so it convenience was uh, high i can easily go towards a, a, a suzuki showroom and can get to buy the mehran from there and then communication uh, communication for mehran is is medium to low because uh, suzuki mehran uh, advertisement is not basically being seen in the in the television commercial for a quite some time and uh, and people usually buy suzuki mehran uh, through word of mouth by people saying that uh, the spare part is low and uh, it's giving me a return value and the resale value so you can easily you can get it through word of mouth it's creating communication so the customer's mindset has uh, different levels with respect to each product and what the marketer needs to do is that you, they need to match their product product price place promotion with the customer's mindset so that each and everything matches which is actually just like the customer is have four locks in the mindset 
regarding what he wants how much is he willing to pay whether it would be convenient for me to get the product and uh, and whether the communication that i am receiving makes any sense and and would trigger my interest or not now the customer's point of view when he tries to create a product and services he must try to create a product and services which would uh, which would uh, fit or to fulfill the problems uh, fulfill the need and to resolve the problem and create value for the customer he must set its price in a way that it should be in the buying range of your customer it should make the pro product available in a way that it would be convenient for the customer to get the product it would uh, the company should try to create promotion and an advertisement in a way that it, the customer would understand it and the customer would uh, the customer will be uh, would be willing to initiate the purchase and would be interested in buying the product so this is actually matching the keys which are actually the product with the customer's mind which are basically the locks if you design your product in a very high quality they may it may fulfill the need and the value of the customer but the price would be so high the customer would not be able to uh, afford it so that this key would not match with this lock if you even if you match with the the price in a such a way that it would uh, fall into the buying range of the customer and you make the product available only to your company's outlet then the all the your customers would not be would not be uh, convenient to get the, those products so this key would not match with this lock and if you try to promote your product and services in a language with the where your customer would not be able to understand so this is this this is clearly a, a mismatch between your your product and your uh, service so so the customers or the marketer must match all these product price place and promotion with the customer's mindset want and need customer cost convenient and the communication so try to understand that the marketing four piece of the offer must match with the four fees three of the customer otherwise there would be no sale now lot of products and lot of things gets failed in the market because the key and the lock doesn't match that's the only reason why the product fails right and there could be an external um, issues there could be a regulatory issue there could be technological issue with a very other issue but from the customer's perspective and from the marketing marketer's perspective the manufacturer and the businessman perspective these keys must match with these locks okay okay so <clears throat> okay now when we talk about service industry the four p's of the marketing must match with the four c's of the uh, of the customers uh, perception but there are additional three p's people process and physical evidence when we talk about people the people should be should be uh, the employees or the sales people should be in a uh, should deal with the customer in such a way that it would create a caring experience because because, because the customer wants uh the people to care about them so that they would guide them so that they would uh, they would treat them in a very uh, honorable way so if the people are not treating the customers in an honorable way no matter if your product is absolutely brilliant whether it's uh, affordable whether you are promoting it in a very good way whether you making it available if the sales people are abusive and are uh, difficult and arrogant the people are not would would not get to your shop and would not buy your product similarly if the the process of getting the product is so is difficult it's can uh, time consuming and it's uh, uh, difficult to understand the customer would not get it because it would be very difficult for the for the customers to cope up with the product uh, with the process or to coordinate with the uh, with the process now physical evidence if the company has so Uh, a proof which would highlight the the importance and the qualities uh, of the of the product uh, if uh, if there's a stamp or a certification which says that uh, this product is uh, hygienic and uh, and has a certificate it's halal and it's all good and yet this is something what the cust customer wants to confirm 
if, uh, and if the customer can get to confirm this from the physical evidence then it means this key would match with this lock 